Evidence is mounting that President Obama deceived Americans about Benghazi, aided in part by elements of the mainstream media. CBS News has released another part of Steve Croft's interview with the president, conducted just one day after that attack. Mr. President, this morning uh, you went out of your way to avoid the use of the word terrorism in connection right. with the Libya attack. Right. Do you believe that this was a, a terrorist attack? Well, it's too early to know uh, exactly how this came about, what group uh, was involved, but obviously uh, it was an attack on Americans. Well, joining us now to, uh, well, to analyze all of this, Fox News National Security Analyst K.T. McFarland. She's held national security posts under Presidents Nixon, Ford, and Reagan. Also joining us, Fox News Middle East expert, chair of Governor Romney's Middle East Advisor Group, Walid Ferris. Uh, let me start with your reaction to this is the second portion of this interview that has been released by 60 Minutes, uh, the first coming in uh, mid-October, uh, mid I believe, the 19th of October, and now this one uh, with only hours remaining uh, before the election. But what does this one say? What this one shows is that the president did t not talk about it as terrorism from the beginning. It sort of puts to a lie everything that's been said so far. You know, we now have the majority of Americans now think that there is a cover-up. The cr tragedy of all of this is, is the mainstream media is part of that cover-up. Uh, I, I want to accept, if I may, just a, a couple of, uh, just uh, particularly uh, Cheryl Atkinson at uh, CBS uh, doing an outstanding job, uh, Foreign Policy Magazine doing a, a great <laughs> job, Brett Baer, Catherine Herridge, our Jennifer Griffin at the Absolutely. Pentagon doing a super job. Well, Lee, your reaction to this stag staggered, staged release, uh, if you will, at the most uh, peculiar time, uh, peculiar times by 60 Minutes? Look, first of all, you just mentioned it. The fact that this is released a few hours before uh, we start voting, Americans are not paying attention to that. But at the same time, for history later, they would say, oh, we released it before D-Day, before Election Day. But the segment itself is so clear. The question to the president was, since you have not said it was terrorism, can you confirm now if it's terrorism? And the president answered, we are investigating this. Meaning that despite all the information that came to the executive branch overnight and that morning, still the president said, we are investigating. This is an attack against Americans because, you know, thugs could be attacking Americans. That's different from terrorism. I think that segment is very, very clear. And, and what are we to make of the fact that the CIA releases a timeline mm -hmm. uh, after almost eight weeks, finally decides to respond? Uh, after, before that, a few days earlier, uh, David Petraeus, the head of the CIA, right. makes a, uh, has a statement released saying no one at the uh, CIA in any way hindered or refused uh, help for those four Americans who were killed. Uh, and then comes a timeline. And then we see a number of news outlets report that timeline by the CIA as if it were gospel. Uh, for example, David Ignatius at the, at the Washington Post. Uh, a, a veteran foreign policy correspondent suddenly embracing the CIA. I have never seen the likes of this, uh, uh, their version, uh, without even qualification. Yeah, and you know the tragedy, I kept thinking, gee, where were we in 1972 during the Watergate break-in? That was the time, and that movie is seen by every cub reporter as the sort of cult classic of how reporters investigate the truth, go up against, you know, the establishment, and they're going to fight for the truth. Well, what's happened now is just the opposite. We now have a mainstream media that doesn't want to fight for the truth at all, that is really the press office of an Obama campaign. And I think that's, when you look back 20 years from now, and people look back at this era, they're not going to talk about all the things that you and I are talking about now. They're going to look back and say, where was the media? Why did the media not exercise its First Amendment rights? Why did they not speak truth to power? Why did they just take what they were fed and go with it because they had political leanings that agreed with the president. Well, I'm going to ask you, if I may, to go beyond uh, the Middle East and geopolitics. Is it your assessment the American people are sufficiently blind and deaf to the political reality uh, in Washington, D.C., that they would uh, succumb to just simply uh, a, a complete unaware, a completely to buy into the eight, what has been an eight-week-long stonewall by this administration and accept Look, the, Amer the American public is submitted to a blackout. They are in a box. 
85% of that mainstream box that beams information to the public is part of the mechanism. You know, uh, they don't want to share information, they don't want to share uh, analysis. It is very ironic, Lou, that the blogosphere, the bloggers, Facebook, YouTube, shared more information with the public than the mainstream media. Uh, th that's a scandal. It's yeah. not a Watergate, this is an ocean yeah. gate uh, that those who need yeah. to inform us and educate us did not. Last word real quick. Majority of Americans want the truth and it still isn't coming and the majority of Americans think that there's been a cover-up and they want to know why four Americans were killed and why no assistance was given before, during, or after. And I, and, and I want to qualify, if I may, uh, uh, Waleed, uh, Brett Baer, Catherine Herridge, Jennifer Griffin, they were at the forefront of the reporting on this story from, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, and the blogosphere is, in point of fact, in my judgment, has been very, very, uh, well, uh, late to the, to the story and could have done so mm -hmm. much better and hopefully will. KT McFarland, Waleed Paris, thank you both.